Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Quality Management. This is Lecture B. The objectives for quality management are to develop a quality management plan, perform quality assurance, apply quality tools. We will continue discussing TQM and its relationship to the ISO 9000 family of certifications, the use of tools for quality management, and finally, the creation and implementation of a quality management plan. ISO 9000 and TQM are two different things. The following list summarizes the comparison of ISO 9000 and TQM. First, they are not interchangeable. ISO 9000 can be viewed as a subset of TQM. ISO 9000 is frequently implemented in non-TQM environments. It can also improve operations in a traditional environment. In a mature TQM environment, ISO 9000 may be redundant. And finally, it is not in competition with TQM. These are considered the big seven quality management tools. One, a cause and effect diagram, often referred to as an Ishikawa or fishbone chart, determines the factors behind an issue or occurrence and categorizes the causal relationships between those factors and their impacts. Two, everyone is familiar with a check sheet. It allows you to gather information in an ordered format that you can customize to your needs. Three, Control charts represent how a manufacturing or business process progresses during a specific time span. Four, a histogram is a bar chart that illustrates the distribution of data. These are most often used to plot frequency distributions. Five, a Pareto chart uses bars and a line graph to visualize the importance of different data points in relation to each other. Six, Scatter diagrams allow you to find associations between two separate sets of data by plotting each along a different axis. Seven, and finally, stratification, sometimes known as a flowchart or run chart. By breaking out data sources so you can see specific data alone or in relation to other types of data, this approach allows you to identify patterns or associations of the information. We will not cover all of these techniques, but each is worth mentioning. A flowchart illustrates the relations between process stages by graphically presenting each stage as a box or shape with arrows between the boxes showing the flow of the entire process. People in all professions deploy flowcharts as visual tools to identify, create, study, and supervise any number of processes. Creating a flowchart by tying each cause and effect diagram together greatly aids the identification of quality points where performance to quality can be measured. In healthcare, flowcharts are used to represent the current state of work and the future state of work. This helps the staff to understand where and when changes are going to be made in their work processes so that they can start to view themselves in that future work state. They help the project team in understanding the processes and where additional changes might be needed in the project. Many times in healthcare, processes are handed down from experienced workers to less experienced workers as part of the orientation process. Often, they do not know why they are performing these steps in a particular manner other than that is the way they learned the process. Once they see the flowcharts, they can begin to tell you what was not captured and begin to give you a truer picture of the process. Activity. Using a paper and pen, draw a flowchart that describes a process. The process can be something from your work or personal life. Identify places in the process where things can go wrong. What could you do to prevent them? Turn in your chart along with a brief explanation of the process. Root Cause Analysis, or RCA, is a class of problem-solving methods aimed at identifying the root causes of problems or incidents. This method approaches problem-solving by fixing or removing the original sources of the issue through an iterative and continuous approach rather than attacking an individual current impact as it occurs. RCA appears to approach problems reactively, that is, it analyzes an incident after it occurs. However, once you become familiar with the technique, you can learn to predict problems. 
This means that RCA is able to forecast the possibility of an incident before it could occur. While one follows the other, RCA is a completely separate process to incident management. The fishbone, or Ishikawa diagram, as shown on this slide, is a tool which helps you explore all potential or real causes that result in a single defect or failure. Once all inputs are established on the fishbone, you can use additional techniques to drill down to the root causes. Quality Checklists Uncomplicated and familiar, the check sheet allows you to gather qualitative or quantitative information efficiently and immediately. If the sheet records quantitative data, you may also hear it referred to as a tally sheet. Checklists are used extensively in healthcare, both in the administrative areas and in the clinical areas. All of the staff that you will be working with on the project are familiar with checklists. Don't hesitate to develop these. Examples of checklists include new unit checklists designed to remind everyone about the things that are easily forgotten, a checklist reviewing the needed actions before the go live starting several days before down to the minutes before, and team coordination checklists for the day of go live. These types of lists give your team members confidence that you have tried to think of everything possible before the action starts. Activity. Break into small groups of three to four members. Take 10 minutes to review a known process. I would recommend using the flowchart one of your group members developed in the last activity. Use a point in this process to create a cause and effect diagram to determine possible sources of problems or defects or produce a checklist that can be used to avoid problems at a specific process point in the overall process. Each group will report back to the class, five minutes for each group. Developed in the early 1920s, Statistical Process Control, or SPC, was used by the United States during World War II to enhance the performance of such wartime products as firearms. SPC uses statistical tools and techniques, such as control charts and process behavior charts, to improve a process's ability to develop product efficiently, economically, and with the least amount of variability. While typically directed to manufacturing processes, SPC is an appropriate tool for any process with a quantifiable product. If analysis of the control chart indicates that the process is currently under control, that is, stable, with variation only coming from sources common to the process, then data from the process can be used to predict the future performance of the process. If the chart indicates that the process being monitored is not in control, analysis of the chart can help determine the sources of variation, which can then be eliminated to bring the process back into control. Control charts can be used to determine the process's stability regarding variation. If the process is stable, you can use that information to forecast the success of the operation. If the process is not stable, you can assess the chart to pinpoint and then attack the reasons for the unpredictability. In a Pareto chart, bars typically depict monetary value or rate of occurrence and are organized in descending height from left to right. Visualizing the information this way allows you to identify the most significant data inputs, which can be very useful in quality control, particularly if you need to isolate common origins of errors. Many software packages are available to generate these types of graphs, including widely available Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice Calc, as well as more specialized applications. Project quality planning is defined as a set of activities planned at the beginning of the project that helps achieve quality in the project being executed. The purpose of the project quality plan is to define activities or tasks that intend to deliver products while focusing on achieving the customer's quality expectations. These activities and tasks are defined on the basis of the quality standards set by the organization delivering the product. In healthcare, part of your quality event could be the review of policies and procedures to ensure that they are incorporated into your plan. If a procedure states that a certain checklist is used, the system needs to provide that checklist or at least point to where it can be found as part of the system checks and alerts. Many quality policies are reportable conditions to either federal or state regulatory bodies. 
building them into your system at the beginning is easier than rebuilding the system after it is in production. The Quality Management Plan documents the client's approved quality scope and details the activities and processes that will keep the project on track to achieve this quality ideal. A detailed quality management plan that focuses on both project deliverables and processes helps to guarantee well-designed products that satisfy approved standards, effective on-book work practices, established approaches to pinpointing and rectifying non-conformant processes, activities, and products, and proven quality assurance procedures that continually evaluate the project's activities and processes. High-level quality objectives should be identified and clearly defined. These are generally provided in a descriptive list format. When identifying quality objectives, be sure that you establish them with input from the client and present them in relation to the project and institutional goals or policies. A grid like the one illustrated on this slide can be used to identify the project processes and outputs that will undergo quality testing. The quality and organizational requirements and how adherence to them will be assessed. The tools and methods used to assess quality and how frequently the quality assurance processes will be implemented. This kind of grid is generally the meat of the project quality control section of the project management plan. Quality assurance activities examine project processes and workflows to assess their abilities in meeting a project's planned outcomes. The table on this slide breaks out each process to undergo quality assurance, the standards and requirements regarding quality assurance for that process, the activity, which might be an audit or evaluation, that will assess if that process is correctly performed, and the frequency of that assessment. The table on this slide details each duty related to quality held by each project team member role. It defines the duties and resources assigned to each team role, lists any applicable tools, and outlines the plan for reporting and documenting problems. Quality Tools This simple table illustrates one way to keep track of your quality tools and their uses. You may find a table or grid like this one helpful to document and monitor quality problems as they occur and as they are resolved. Activity. Take each of the described sections and utilize the provided template to create a quality assurance project management plan for the sample health IT scenario in the next slide. Work in small groups. Each group will take 20 to 25 minutes to create their plan and 5 minutes to present the plan to the class. A clinical department must replace or upgrade their current departmental system because the software company is sunsetting the current product within two fiscal years. They must either move to the current company's next product line or find a new vendor. The system must have 24-7, 365 availability. Current personnel, 50 pharmacists, 100 pharmacy technicians, and 25 support personnel. Features of the system should include, but are not limited to, the ability for unidirectional interface with current admissions, transfer, and discharge ADT information system. Have the ability to admit patient if the ADT system is unavailable. Print customized patient medication labels. Unidirectional interface with the medication stocking robot for patient medication needs. Bidirectional interfaces with the current billing, inventory, and reporting systems. Medication alerting system for allergies, drug to drug, drug pregnancy, age, and other pharmacological alerts and or interactions. Ability to attach documentation to any alerts or interactions and bidirectional interface to third-party drug information systems, secure backups, reporting for statistical and financial needs, and redundancy for disaster recovery. This concludes Lecture B of Quality Management. 
In summary, TQM, or Total Quality Management, is a management concept created by W. Edwards Deming. Its goal is to reduce errors in manufacturing or service processes, increase customer satisfaction, streamline supply chain management, aim for modernization, and ensure that workers are trained to the highest levels. TQM is distinct from other approaches in that it ties to improvement quality by ensuring conformance to internal requirements while many other methods focus on reducing defects. Quality culture is an important component of TQM and can be defined as a company where all employees are keenly aware of the importance of quality and continuous improvement. Understanding is a key element to introducing a quality culture. Organizational culture is an idea in the field of organizational studies and management, which describes the psychology, attitudes, experiences, beliefs, and values, both personal and cultural values, of an organization. It has been defined as, quote, the specific collection of values and norms that are shared by people and groups in an organization and that control the way they interact with each other and with stakeholders outside the organization, end quote. ISO 9000 is a certification program through the International Standards Organization. The ISO 9000 family of standards has grown over the years and now includes various elements of the TQM philosophy. ISO is not full-blown TQM, but it is a valid certification that requires a great deal of diligence and documentation around quality process, assurance, and control within an organization. There are a variety of tools that can be used in conjunction with the Project Quality Management Plan in order to provide both quality control and quality assurance in projects. The tools discussed in this chapter can be applied immediately to projects of all types and can be implemented using standard Microsoft Office software such as PowerPoint, Excel, Visio, and Project. Your Quality Management Plan will outline and document the degree of quality required by the client. It will also detail the planned implementation of activities to guarantee that quality. This unit has provided a basic overview of each section of a project quality management plan.